I've got water. I've got the thing going. Mio this. I've gone to the bathroom. I've eaten lunch. I have a nice, nice big jug of water for the whole recording. Traffic, shut up. Damn. <laughs> up nerds and welcome to powerful the power metal podcast it's the podcast with powerful metal and even more powerful opinions my name is kyle your host and i'm joined as always by my friend fernando hello i am currently taking time out of playing elden ring to record a podcast for you as you take time out of playing Elden ring to listen to this podcast so we should all be so thankful fernando how are you doing today i'm doing pretty great uh it's a nice Cold Saturday here as we record. Uh, I assume some people might be listening while playing Elden Ring. They don't even have to stop. Uh, yeah. Oh, hey, the, hey. For the people who are listening to this while you know grinding up runes or throwing themselves against a boss, uh, you missed that dodge roll. You panicked. <laughs> you got punished for it. You gotta you gotta watch it a little more closely and you know stay calm. Get good. Yeah, that, that's, that's basically, <laughs> that's really all getting good is in, in these it's games, it's just paying straight. attention yeah, and having a little bit of patience yes, and not getting frustrated, which, you know, easier exactly. said than done, I guess. Exactly. That's the way it's so powerful. Just get good. Be powerful at it. <laughs> well, we're here today to discuss, you know, what what's new, what's news, what we've been listening to in the power metal world. And I think one of the biggest news stories we've had in recent times is with the band Twilight Force. You know, pretty pretty popular band. They love their twinkly, happy, adventure you know, video, you might even say video game fantasy type metal. And the dark times have befallen their Twilight Realms. It's it's like the shadow of the not Erd tree. Yeah. But half of the members of Twilight Force are leaving. And some pretty important ones at that. Yeah, so we we didn't see it coming. Uh, no, not at all. The public was very blindsided to this, at least the international public. Um, but suddenly we get this announcement from the band and from each of the members. Half of course, the band, the band announcement yeah. is in character and fantasy talk because fucking Twilight Force just can't not do that. It, in their defense, I want to say um, it's not like last time. Because it's, it's not, yeah. We've it's seen not this. like a unhappy situation yeah like so like um for anyone that's new to this um many years ago a twilight force had uh, uh a member departure we covered it here at the time and one of the main things was that the announcement was just so weird <laughs> being it, it becomes tone deaf yeah times. it was too hard in character and this one was not it was like playful but it it had the right tone and everything. Um, yeah. I saw some people like writing a fully, like a, a full flamboyant version, like, like the original one just to, to make fun of it. But uh, it was pretty okay. So half the band is gone. Just Yes. And so like when, when you read this and you see, oh, Lind, Born and Aaron Deer have made the monumental decision to move on to other adventures. And you might think, okay, cool. Which guys are Lind, Born, and Aaron Deer? Because <laughs> I don't know the fantasy names. But to make that a bit more clear, uh, I recommend the Wikipedia page on this. God bless Wikipedia. Lind being uh, Philip Lind, who's their main you know, bl- blonde dude guitarist. He's one of the founders of the band, one of the main songwriters alongside uh, Daniel Beckman or Blackwald, who's like the keyboardist and orchestration guy. So I think he's the most significant departure out of this. But not to discount that they're also losing a couple other members, that being their born and is it Ar- 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 Arion? Erendir. Erendir. I think it's Erendir, yeah. So it's uh, uh, Dunder Bjorn Lundqvist and Jock Leandro Johansson. To put it in more simple music terms, the guitarist and bassist are leaving. Yeah. So Twilight Force is down two guitars. And bass. So all the string players kind of are gone. Um, we are they left. retain their keyboardist, yeah. singer, and drummer. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, like you mentioned, for a lot of people, the most important thing 
is that uh, Lind, the other guitar, the guitar player, was like the one half of the song write, the main songwriters, uh, along with uh, Beckham with Blackwell. Um, so everyone is left thinking, oh man, is the band going to change drastically? Because um, I think this is pretty good that in our, at least in power metal nowadays, people understand that songwriters are more important than vocalists for how much a band can change. So they are really, re people are really worried. Uh, yeah. Because uh, all we know is that they had half and half in songwriting pretty evenly, but uh, not everyone knows exactly who did, who was responsible, more responsible or not for what aspects of the sound and what they like and whatnot. I guess uh, we'll see. <laughs> eventually yeah they say at the end of their message and fear not for the sound songs and musical landscapes of twilight force will not change and the legends shall live on sparkle crystal all sparkle emojis yay <laughs> yeah i don't think it's gonna they, change drastically honestly no i think blackwall and the whole like symphonic stuff that they do is a, that's a very big part of it like the guitar solos might feel a little different going forward i could see that being a thing Hmm. with whoever they recruit to be their new guitarist. They've said they're they're not canceling uh, live performances such as Prog Power coming up, and that's in, what, like two months? Uh, yes, I would guess that when they did the announcement, they already had people lined up. It's just a matter of getting all the marketing pictures, names, stories, all of that set up for a nice um, announcement that's independent from the split announcement. Uh, mm -hmm. But I would guess, and I don't know, it, this is this is just me guessing, they probably already have players in place. I would probably Americans, at least for Prague Power to fill in, maybe. That can be, I mean, that, that could be for a, for that first uh, show. That's a very big one that a lot of people are, are looking forward to. Uh, some people are very heartbroken that they didn't get to see them with the other lineup before, but well, that yeah. Just happens. Makes me really glad I, I made the effort to go to the tour earlier this year after skipping them for fellowship at Epic Fest. Yeah. And well, that, that, that's it. <laughs> I guess so the force changing. Uh, we'll see how that goes. The chain, when they change uh, vocalists, it didn't really impact the overall sound as much as the general band doing different things. Um, yeah, like it's it, Conti to or Erickson to Conti is like a noticeable change, but as far as like the actual style of the music, yeah. that didn't really change at all. Not not at all. Uh, I'm very happy that Conti is still there, but yeah, we'll we'll see how uh, they do live because we'll obviously we will know the new lineup live first before they do any new albums. So that would be interesting to. to to keep an eye on and see where they go. But that's that's the big news. Uh, and speaking of bands going in an interesting direction, I want to talk about this new Beast in Black single. Oh, there we go. So every, everyone's favorite pop band that pretends to be power metal sometimes, Beast in Black, have made the bold decision to listen to our advice yes and make a euro beat song all right yes. or euro beast as they called it oh they, oh my god <laughs> i think i said it on facebook or something uh, because they, they couldn't help themselves i'm don't sure do that but it's fine it's fine so <laughs> power of the beast power for anyone that doesn't know euro beat let's talk about euro beat for a second yes this, uh, for a second he says the super cool genre of music uh that comes from Italy, from I think it's the uh, mid '90s or early '90s even. I'm, I'm not really sure now. Uh, and it was specifically marketed towards Japan, and it's like a subgenre from Eurodance. So it's electronic dance music, but it has really cool vocals and cool guitar solos sometimes, and a very very specific beat and very specific use of lead synths and lead synth sounds based on brass and stuff like that. And you probably know it from the uh, all the memes of um, of drifting and initial D memes. Initial D because means deja vu. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Exactly. Very famously, the anime initial D used an extensively an extensive Eurobeat soundtrack. 
and and I mean extensively. There's a shit ton of songs, and also outside of the anime, there's a crap ton of songs um, done in this style. And it has always been power metal's twin brother. It's like the wacky cousin of power metal, basically. They, yeah, they so who goes to the clubs and parties and trips? Yeah, cars. exactly, exactly. Uh, so the power metal dude is like they are dressed in his uh, Twilight Force kind of get up. And then it's the cousin that it's like, yeah, let's go drifting, bro. Uh, but there was a lot of overlap on the people making that style in the 90s in Italy. To the point that we we know, and if this is new information to you, I really encourage you to go on, seek these things and listen to them. Uh, Fabio Leone and Roberto Tiranti, uh, famous from being in Labyrinth and Rhapsody and all of those cool bands, they were doing vocals for Eurobeat releases back in the 90s. Uh, so the the language of it, the style of the genre is really similar. Uh, also, another song that you might be f- familiar with that is actually an Eurobeat song is uh, Glory Hammer's Universe on Fire. And this new Beast in Black one, Power of the Beast, went full Eurobeat. And I'm all for it because they clearly know the style. They clearly like it. It's really cool. But, and this is a big but for me particularly, Uh I think they really dropped the ball with the mix of this song. Because... Uh, I I saw some people talking about the mix, like wanting like Giannis to be higher. I thought it was fine, but maybe I'm not as sensitive to some of this. It's... I don't know. It's like, I think if I mention it to you, you will, or, or if you listen to it in context of other songs and not on its own, it might be more evident. But there's so much uh, bass and low end with the mid, low end with the guitars that it sounds not like I'm listening to the song here in my own place, but it sounds like I'm hearing it through the wall from the club next door that it's playing it really loudly. It's, um, very the, the bass instruments uh because there's synths uh, besides electric bass and the guitars and the mid-ranging things they are so overbearing in the mix that it's like i have a pillow over my speakers when i listen to it and that's very annoying because this is a really high energy poppy bright kind of sound kind of genre because the, the, song the is main really cool. hook of the song is the and every time we touch da, 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 da. yeah it's it's <laughs> exactly. that song but in yeah Muro beat and it works really that well. Song is Eurobeat. That song is Eurobeat as well. Um it qualifies. Uh but it, it's it's really catchy. And it, yeah, it's uh, insanely catchy. The, I, I've had every time content, we touch in my head. Yeah, the con- for, like the last few days. <laughs> yeah, the content is great. Uh but I really struggle with it uh because this is a trend on the latest Beast in Black releases. They've been going louder and louder uh with all the mid-range and low end and like we are more powerful more strong and it's now so much uh that you lose you lose all the clarity and all the punch of the high end the vocals are pretty buried i agree with that uh between all the things because you can really tell because there's a section near the end uh well not before the final choruses where all the instruments go away and it's just the vocals and like a little piano and it's super clear suddenly it's like the clouds open and Yanis <laughs> is there and like, oh, yeah, the stuff is there. And then when all the rest of the band comes back in, it's like, oh, it's all covered again and it's all muffled again. Uh, and it makes me angry because it's a cool song and I want to enjoy it. And they made it so I cannot really enjoy it much. Well, I'll continue to enjoy it then. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just keep listening to Cascada. Like, that's it. <laughs> um, Either way it works. I, I, so for me, Beast in Black... I've kind of always been kind of like in and out on them where sometimes their whole, like the pop thing really works for me. And like the, like one or two songs now where they actually like do power metal, I think usually work for me. This is one where when they take a like well-established, really good pop hook and then maybe just tweak the genre, you know, just, just enough. That's I think kind of where they land into like some of their best songs, mm. like sweet true lies, you know, it's, you know, it's the Bon Jovi <laughs> song. Just when they just steal songs and it kind of works. That's, that's not a great <laughs> strategy. 
<laughs> it works for them, I guess. I don't think it's that bad. I don't think it's that dire. Uh, they have well, no, because every moments. time we touch doesn't have uh, like roaring sounds when they go into. Yeah, the I know, but, but I mean, they <laughs> they have other moments that are good. Uh, they it's not that dire. It's not like they cannot write stuff. Uh, but I prefer it when they lean fully into this kind of dancey electronic things instead of standing halfway between being metally and not. Mm -hmm. Um. Like it's probably my this is uh, like songwriting wise and like the content wise it's one of my favorite Beastie Black songs. Period. I think it's one of the best things they've they, they've done. But um, I like it better than I think almost it, probably everything on the last album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The last album wasn't that cool for us. Uh, but this sound, this trajectory, and the sound they're having uh, to me, it's gone over the limit. And it's now working really against everything they are doing. So I hope someone tells them that and they dial it back. They um, probably won't. They probably won't. Uh, but one can dream. One can dream. Uh, they said this song is a standalone single, so I'm not sure yes. we can use it as like a total indicator of what the next presumably like soon coming album will be. But I guess we'll see. Yeah, no, not at all. And I like that. I prefer that. I like bands just doing singles with stuff they like that it's not just says the guy who mostly does singles with his always, fans yes but this is this is the thing that i will always complain about with you metal heads like let people do singles like in the rest of all recorded music please <laughs> not everything <laughs> is the lead up to an album not everything has to be a full album because then you complain about all the ballads and the intros and, and the bad songs and there's five boring songs per album. Yeah, because you force them to make a full album when they didn't want to <laughs> and didn't have enough songs to make one. So they just put shit in it. <laughs> Keep making singles, bands. That's, that's Anyway, great. look forward to the new Eons Enthroned album this year or next year. <laughs> Don't be like that. <laughs> it's... Uh, God damn it. All right, well, speaking of an album-y fucking ass album... Let's talk about Let's Seven Spires. Talk about Seven Spires. So, Seven Spires released A Fortress Called Home. Uh, we knew this album was coming for a long while. We had a couple singles. Uh, I like the singles a lot to start somewhere. And I listened to this album twice in full, like paying attention. And it's pretty great, honestly. Yeah, Seven Spires for the Uninitiated are a symphonic metal band from the U.S. that really they really cover a lot of styles from like they lean into a lot of like the like mellow death or black metal style stuff. They lean into very symphonic stuff, but they also lean into like little bits of power metal and like fucking Disney ass songs if you're really squint at it sometimes. So. Their albums tend to be long and have all kinds of big grand ideas and themes and light motifs and big brain stuff like that. And they definitely keep all of that going with the a, a fortress called home. What does that even mean? Hmm. Who's, like, because I, I listened to this album a couple times through, l reading the lyrics, trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. They unfortunately did not update the lore section of their website to include this new album. <laughs> So I, I had to just free associate what's going on. Yeah, I didn't go that hard. Uh, okay. L listeners of the show hopefully are familiar by now that I don't really parse lyrics by default. Uh, and I haven't had a listen while reading the lyrics yet. I might eventually, uh, but it just hasn't happened yet. Uh, but to me, the title, A Fortress Called Home, with the album art, it's really evocative of like needing a safe space that at the same time might trap you. And the overall album feels really sad to me. Yeah. So I think like in overall, this is kind of a, maybe a darker album for them. Like there wasn't a yeah. lot of like happy catharsis to it. Exactly. Like, yeah. Because in the, the previous the first one, song or the first real song uh, after the intro yeah. songs upon wine stained tongues, probably my favorite just because it is the most happy at times. And I think thematically it's supposed to represent like, like a young, innocent point in your life when mm. something good happened. 
I think is kind of where it's supposed to represent because it's like oh i've got i'm like falling in love and i'm singing songs and having wine and stuff i think that's what that represents but uh how, how do you how do you feel about it i really like the song uh as i think all of the people that we know nobody knew that it featured uh conti okay uh, <laughs> this was throwing me for it a was a when great I first heard surprise because i'm like Who's doing these male vocals? It sounds a lot like Conti, but I didn't see anything about it. Is yeah. it Conti? Am I crazy? It was, it was is clearly it... Conti. Like, I, I don't know he has a distinct you, voice. How you could mistake <laughs> Alessandro Conti singing? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm like I'm like ninety percent sure it's Conti. I just didn't see anything that it was gonna be. <laughs> yeah, because it wasn't advertised, right? We knew and not at all, and we... he's not like listed on the Spotify or whatever. Yeah, yeah. The, the that sadly. Um, the whole credit section of the streaming services is never fully fed with information. It has nothing, which is really annoying. But I remember when the album came out, I listened to it really late in the day. I wasn't even online for that day. I was really busy. And then I came into the chat uh, on the Power Metal Discord, and it saw like everyone was like, is this, is this Conti? How? No, it can't be Conti. It was nothing says out. Does anyone have the CD to check? Whatever. And, and it was like, do you have functioning ears people no how is this? <laughs> we listen to power metal <laughs> you can trust your instincts if it sounds like it it's probably them yeah like like i thought like maybe is it pete or jack doing vocals i don't think so oh man like, everyone, it's probably cozy everyone's scrambling to find any information and, and I, I even saw that um during, uh, that week that weekend conti was uh i think he was touring with trick or, or treat so there wasn't even like a social media post about it until like three days later. Uh, so I get that it wasn't uh, it, it wasn't advertised at all. There's other guests in other songs as well that weren't advertised either. Uh, that are really cool. Like Ty is in this um, from he's on like the choirs yeah. somewhere, right? Oh, he he has like a, a f up from tenor part um, in one of the songs, which I forgot the name, but. It, it's there like i i i asked like it, this sounds like like ty and also um uh david uh i guess on he is in all the albums i think um and then some other people i think that i'm missing now but yeah the, the song is really cool uh i really like the the feature it works really nice um uh i'm not sure if it's my favorite song to listen to standalone, because there's some other great moments in this album. Mm -hmm. um, and this wasn't even a single, right? This was, yeah, that's why it was no. such a surprise because it's the, it hits you right there with the album and nobody said it coming. Uh, but it, it's really cool. Uh, then it goes to Almost Town. That was a single. Yeah, that was one of them. And I think that's the, the only song that has like a pop, popier moment you need yeah i i when i was reading through the lyrics this almost struck me as like the you know the i want song from like old disney yeah, movies yeah. right yeah it would make, make sense uh, and it has those little hooks uh of course we already were familiar with it because i think it was the first single um, it was yeah like first or second single yeah pretty cool uh then I don't have a lot to say about Impossible Tower. That's that one was kind of the blandest for yeah. me because it's just kind of dark and plodding along. Yeah, it's just like connective like, it, tissue. It, it, it works for like establishing that mood, hmm. but I didn't personally. I didn't get much like development out of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, maybe it's worth mentioning it now. I still think the one weakness that Seven Spires have still is that their albums get over long and there's a lot the, of spaces to trim fat out of them yeah like there's there's a lot of great moments through like you know like you said all their albums have this problem there's a lot of really strong ideas here and there but it gets too spread out mm -hmm. and they, i think this album you can feel that a lot too yeah it's still there they need to be aggressive on cutting stuff and deciding hey let's look at the pacing of everything let's remove this and not overindulge in anything because like, these are, like we said, album-ass albums. Yeah. All the tropes are there, pretty much. <laughs> uh, but Love Souvenir. 
the, Love I Souvenir is, I love think, the song. most interesting song on the album. It's so cool because it has all that jazz. Yeah, like it. it comes on. I'm like, am I in a fucking jazz lounge now? Uh, what that, is going on? I think it's my favorite thing uh, from all of the Seven Spires albums is when the Berkeley jazz vibe just comes through from all these uh, clear, clearly. I, I, I assume it's the vibe from there because they all studied uh, formally. Uh, the Berkeley it, Music School. Yeah, yeah, Berkeley Music School. And it's like, yeah, all that just coming in and they execute it so well. And that's one of the things that I worry about with the fact that they are changing drummers now. Because the drumming is very important <laughs> in this formula. Well, they, they still execution. had Chris Dovis do the yeah, recording for this, for this album. Exactly. That's the thing. So, so that's why I'm like, oh, yeah, this works perfectly. It sounds like the previous ones. But now going forward, is the next drummer going to have these uh, just sensitivities that he can pull these things off? That's what worries me. Yeah, like this is one of those like really bold swings for like a metal band that you don't see very often. And they're actually able to make it work. Yeah. That's very impressive to me. Yeah, that's the thing, pulling it off. It's only the execution because they, and they've done this before. Like they have uh, flavors of jazz in the, going back all the way to the oldest songs. Um, so it's something that I like, really look forward to in all uh, the Seven Spires releases. Um, and I, it, I love like the, the halfway point of the song where it sounds like everything is like struggling to break through, like the way like the violins are kind of like screeching. Adrian's voice is almost like starting to crack. And then it goes into the blast beats and like everything just fucking explodes. And you're like, whoa, dude. <laughs> I, th- this is a really cool song to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is the the song where Ty has his little part, Ty from Lords of the Trident. Um, then when well, Architect of Creation is the next song and it was another single. And yeah, this is another favorite for me. I think the singles were a great choice i know a lot of times uh with the bands that we talk about the singles are usually like weird choices but yeah i I feel for me singles go singles tend to go one of two ways it's either they're the only songs they are worth a damn or they're the weird ones that like are trying to get a different audience and Mm -hmm. they don't always work for me this is an album where i think the singles actually really capture like of the vibe of the album but aren't the only strong yeah, points. Yeah, exactly. They were great, uh, like, they were great little um, tastes of the whole vibe, and they are good songs. And they are... Yeah, in, definitely. And it's all very cohesive. And this one has, like, I from the day the, the single came out, I've had... The, it's weird that this is a hook that works, but just I hear it, I, I am walking on the street and I hear it in my head, like, of creation! just screeching in my head like how is that a hook <laughs> yeah, like, yeah the choruses on this album are they don't really do like your standard like power metal like oh I'm really singing along to this it's more of just like a here's like a just like a center point of this song that yeah. Adrian is somehow pulling off yeah it might not even be like a climax or like a like a high energy point within the song like at times it almost feels like the courses are like a bridge of sorts. Am I, am I weird yeah. for thinking no, that? No, 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 I agree with you. Like for example, this is like architect of creation. It doesn't have like a strong chorus in a traditional sense. It has that hook at the end of one section and it goes into a different section. It's not like yeah. a, we're well, building well, while it does up. these like, the verses are like, well, like black metal almost. Yeah. So it's not building up to drop into like an explosion of, yeah, this is the chorus. Dun, dun, dun. It just doing like talking, talking, and suddenly it has this little hook that lasts only a couple of hours, and then we just continue telling the story. Um, mm-hmm. And when you do it properly, it works really well, and I think it works uh, really well uh, here. And also, maybe it's worth mentioning for anyone that's listening to the show that doesn't know Seven Spires that obviously it's we love Seven Spires a lot. And it's not very power metal at, at all <laughs> anymore. But, but we always do, talk about them. <laughs> but when they do do power metal, they're pretty good at it. And I wish yeah. they did it more. And Adrian, the uh, the vocalist, is in Avantasia. 
So that's that will be our excuse I, I, forever. <laughs> literally before jumping on this call, I saw on YouTube that there's like a, a festival show with Avantasia from like a week ago the th- with the thumbnail being aging. I'm like, oh, I got to check this out. <laughs> yeah. Also, th- that video you posted of like the like Sonic anniversary. Oh, man. Yeah. She, she was singing like one of the like death metal songs from the most recent game. And it was really sick. <laughs> it's so good. So tangent time. Yes, uh, tangent time. Tangent time. The Sonic Symphony has been on tour for the past weeks uh, in the U.S. And I think some other places. I don't remember now, but I, I, I'd seen the U.S. They're dates. in Japan, too. Yeah. Obviously. Well, Obviously. Sonic. Yeah, it makes sense. And uh, it's a really cool show uh, because it's, as it's, the name implies, it's a light, little live orchestra. But obviously, if you're familiar with Sonic music throughout uh, the ages, uh, they have a lot of rock on them. The, the, the main composer for many of the games, Jun Senoue, is just a traditional uh, fan of Deep Purple. And so <laughs> those kinds of shows uh, where you have like it, the, the people that are touring uh, over the world, around the world, it's not the full symphony, the full band, the full orchestra. That is like, that's not how it works. It's just unimaginably costly. So usually there's a couple of key people that travel and they hire musicians in each region uh, to play the, the parts. That's how classical music works in general. Uh, and for the US shows uh, that I noticed, it's like, yeah, we have some known names. We had Ty from Lost of the Trident and Adrian. Uh, from Seven Spires doing vocals on many of the shows. And if you find videos of them, they are so cool. And it's like a dream gig for a lot of people, uh, including them. And it's really great to see it, uh, going from the little uh, orchestral arrangements of the classic uh, the Sega, the first game's uh, levels music, and then going through the rock, uh, very hard rocking uh, songs from the what was it the Dreamcast era or the the, the one with this the PlayStation era, um, and then the newer stuff, and it's so cool to see it because they are great vocalists, obviously, and uh, they do all these awesome songs that a lot of us know have known on our lives. I would love to see that. I haven't seen it coming to South America, but uh, I have seen. The Final Fantasy one, the Final Fantasy oh. Distant Worlds uh, Symphonic Tour many, many years ago. And it's always a great experience. If you see any of those uh, orchestra playing video game music and you like video games and music, you should always go because they are always yeah, great. I, I was thinking about going to the Near Automata one this year, but I think it happened when we were in Denmark, so that didn't work oh, out. Damn. Yeah, that, that ha- that's awful when that happens. The timing just wasn't right. Yeah, so it goes. That was a tangent. Uh, <laughs> th- th- thank you for the tangent time. So back back to Seven Spires. Uh, one of the songs they I think put out alongside the album was Portrait of Us. And like, I want to like this song, but I'm curious how you feel about this. Like in the chorus, Adrian pronounces some words really weirdly. All, like all the like words that end in shun. Mm-hmm. like reflection like the way she like ends the word i think it's really weird and it bothers me i'm sure there's like an artistic point to it uh, but i i'm not I gonna Do, as, as a non-native english speaker i don't know if this bothers you as much i'm not gonna lie i have no idea what you're talking about because i don't know a single word that was how it was pronounced there because all the words just are sounds to me when i'm listening to the album sorry uh, I know people don't like this, um, and it's not like it. I, I'm no. I don't want to diminish the words, but when I was listening, I, I listened to the album today, and I couldn't tell you a single word of this song. Honestly, uh, uh, sorry. Because like, because like, uh, when I first listened to the song, I was reading the lyrics alongside it, and I'm like, that's a weird way of singing that. <laughs> yeah, I I can imagine what you're saying, and maybe like sometimes. People do that just to make rhymes work. Uh, but maybe it's something that it's annoying. I I, I will I will try to pay attention now. Uh, I need to do a full listen following along with the lyrics 
as I mentioned before, I haven't done that, but I will do that uh, because doing that for a previous album was really re rewarding. Yeah, uh, like when I, I when I try to follow along with the lyrics this time, it it's hard because they don't always like you know establish who is speaking, mm -hmm. when is this happening, you know, like normal story things, right? So you kind of have to guess. Yeah, so those, can... yeah, I understand that. I understand the frustration with that. But I just so don't. I, I'm trying I to lean care. more into like the the vibes or like the emotional. Yeah, side that's of it. more important. So my, I think my my understanding is that this album is basically you, you kind of hinted at the start, but it's it's really about like like love and regret and like feeling like trapped or lonely and maybe the main character becomes an evil god at some point. <laughs> Hard to tell. I I but, I care about the vibes more. Uh, for sure. Than the plot strictly making sense they, they, they mention a specific region of of boston in emerald necklace Ooh. that our our bostonian based big mega seven spire super fan friend i think uh got a kick out of yeah yeah i remember the men uh, the mention of that uh which is hilarious oh it even says an arm in arm walks through the emerald necklace of boston <laughs> Which is like, I guess, like a park region or something in Boston. Oh. So shout out to Boston. It, it's it's the glory hammer trick. <laughs> Honestly, though, like, so the uh, speaking of glory hammer tricks, uh, when I was watching through this the show Succession, one like the main like patriarch of that family is originally from Dundee, Scotland. Yeah, and I have an episode where they go to Dundee, and I'm just like. I can't take this seriously <laughs> because I associate Dundee with fucking uh, Glory Hammer, <laughs> and it's a it's a hilarious episode of the show because uh, because of a song <laughs> that gets uh, played there I that I won't spoil. But uh, it's just it's weird the way these little connections can happen. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Uh, <laughs> um, so where uh, so Emerald Necklace? That's, that's a nice song. Um, I think it's the shortest song. It's the shortest song in the album, right? It's yeah. it's, it's the ballad, you might say. It's it's yeah, and it just somehow they did a song under four minutes long. Yeah, and it goes away relatively quick. Um, oh, it actually is the shortest one. Crazy. Not counting uh, the like intro. No, the intro but, doesn't yeah, never counts. The intro is never track counts. zero. If you ask me, it, like it. Let's people don't do intros. Uh, I know you like doing them. Uh, there's no point. It doesn't work. Sometimes I'll listen to like the last like five seconds of an intro track for like the proper lead in to the first real track. Yeah, but there's very few songs where that's actually worth it. Um, yeah. It, it usually like, doesn't you know, work. Epic is Fury into uh, yeah, that one. Emerald Sword and is good. Th it's that one, the the one that's almost the same for um, Power of the Dragon Flame. And the. I like. Uh, Valley of the Dem with the guitar sounds at the intro. And I have the track, those three songs, I have them edited to be one track in my hard drive with the intro. Nice. Absolutely no other song is worthy. So if it's not going to be that good, don't do an intro. Exactly. And it's not good. And when you're doing it, it's not going to be that good. Just stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to. I, I feel like uh, one of the other intros that I think almost works for me is so the Unleash the Archers album Abyss, the first track I think is Waking Dream and it kind of like repeats this like motif over and over again hmm. and that like melody comes back in like the end of the album so it kind of works as like a thematic thing there so but that's it, even that arguably goes on for like a minute too long so yeah, just, so this, just don't guys you don't need to yeah I like if you have a nice build up and leading to the start of your first song that you just think, make that the first 10 seconds yeah, exactly. of that song so and you're good. If you think this helps with the impact of the start of this song, which is the case uh, with Emerald Sword, because Emerald Sword just starts with the hit, like dun 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 dun, which is pretty cool, but having a build up to that hit. That actually elevates it to be an even harder hit. Yeah, that's great. Just make it all one song so that you don't give the choice. If you give the choice to people to skip it, then you already 
or admit it that it's not that good. <laughs> I'm not really needed for that song. Anyways, let's stop let's stop grabbing on the intros. Uh <laughs> because the rest of the album is uh it's interesting. Uh because uh between the next three songs, I have a bit of a blur, even though I listened to it like two hours ago, one hour ago. Um Yeah, the one that um of the like towards the back half of the album, No Place for Us, I think stood out to me the most. Mm. And then the old heart of being left behind the last track, uh, I thought was pretty solid. I too. really like the old heart of being left behind. Uh, I think it's very, very strong. Uh, but yeah, the, the, I think the ending of that song too, when I was like reading the lyrics, but I thought that came in very powerfully. I'm looking forward to actually reading the lyrics, listening then, uh, because I, it, I, I'm exactly not exactly sure what it talks about, but it felt like really powerful, really strong. It, it it just kind of I think sums up the whole album yeah. well. Yeah, uh, it needs like it, even just like the title <laughs> kind of is evocative of that. It is like it, it just having that song at the end, the way it sounds, it it's what made me think. Yeah, this is overall a pretty uh, an album that's pretty full of sad and dark. Uh, Bit of a downer. Yeah, but it's not. It doesn't make it bad to listen to. Uh, it's just that kind of content. Yeah, I I don't think this album I'm go- I might not revisit it as much as other Seven Spires stuff, unless I'm in that more specific mood. Mm. It's like usually I find myself listening to their more power metal or more uplifting stuff, or like the more like I guess like hardcore symphonic stuff rather than just like the super dark and depressing stuff. I, I was wondering if they would leave some of that behind, not being in COVID no more, but nope. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes people just have this stuff. And also, like, remember that albums take a long time to make. Uh, Except for the, the last one, because they did that like a year. Yeah. But, <laughs> you, you, but that, was, that was in the middle of COVID. It's always and important the- for people. Um, I mean, I'm talking generally now. It might not be yeah. the same for everyone. Uh, but generally, when the album an album releases, um, that's w- when it dies for the artist in a way. Because that's the moment they are actually done with the whole process, which is when it starts for the audience. So we are this disconnect where we are looking at uh, what the persons were doing and feeling like a year or two before when they were actually developing it. And sometimes even further behind if they started writing it even soon earlier than that. Um mm-hmm. It's always an like an interesting dichotomy, like seeing people react to albums and talking and like, oh, now we understand this person because blah, blah, blah. But you're understanding another version of those people. But yeah, anyways, this album, it's pretty, pretty damn solid and a recommended listen. It's not a power metal album uh, no. <laughs> at all. And like having the first song be the most like uplifting one i think almost like tricks you <laughs> maybe yeah it's the the trap the honey trap to get people hooked yeah. and then oh no oh no uh but we still recommend it um uh, uh i it has a lot of uh heavier elements it has some uh death blocky metal sounding stuff uh it has some jazz it has minutes. some jazz and don't be scared of jazz just go with the <laughs> flow enjoy it you, you actually can enjoy it without having a degree uh, <laughs> I know it's mind blowing, <laughs> um, but it works. Uh, we will recommend it a lot. Um, yeah, the, I think the thing that I might like the most about Seven Spires, or like so many symphonic metal bands, I feel like forget that they're writing metal songs and not doing the soundtrack of a movie. Yes, yes. And Seven Spires does not have that problem. Yeah, this is really important, people. If you are thinking of doing a symphonic metal album, uh, well, I know it. Like you're writing your awesome, your awesome orchestral score. You have, yeah, you're studied. like, oh, dude, it's like, it's like, it's like a movie. It's like yeah. Hans Zimmer or John Williams. It's so crazy. Yeah, dude. you've studied your Hans Zimmer, your John Williams. You've listened to the Lord of the Rings, uh, back, uh, the Lord of the Rings original soundtrack for days on end, but the movie you're seeing in your head when you're writing and listening back to it, no one else knows what that is. And they are not seeing it. And they are not uh, reading it. They're just listening to the songs. They're just listening to background noise. 
And you cannot do that if you're releasing an album. You're releasing something that has to have a main character or something that's happening and not just background dressings. You cannot just draw the backgrounds without any action at the front. So take that extra step and make songs. And even if you're doing like, no, I just want to write full classical music and incorporate metal instruments, you still need to write a protagonist melody, something that's interesting. <laughs> protagonist melody. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just dudes dressed as trees in the background, and that's not interesting. <laughs> and these guys do it. The, that's it. That's the review. It's a great album. Listen to it. Buy it. All right. And then let's get into some more symphonic stuff with a, a, with a real legacy behind it. Let's talk about Rhapsody of Fire. Rhapsody of Fire. So this is... Probably a so first. to to establish where in the universe we are, <laughs> <laughs> the multiverse of Rhapsody. Yeah, oh yeah, so we should get the chart. Uh, uh, how do we communicate the chart? It, uh, so form. on the video version, just put the chart right now. Yeah. If you are on YouTube, it. you can understand perfectly what's it, going on right now. Nothing else to explain. Nothing just look else, at the chart. But for everyone that is not on YouTube or not looking at it, uh, which is valid. So, Rhapsody. Legendary. I, I, I call this one. I, I, this is Staropoli of Fire. Staropoli of Fire. As some people call it the Rhapsody cover band, uh, which is mean, yeah. but A little, valid. Uh, <laughs> it's um, it's uh, debatable, uh, but it's uh, kind of valid. So this is Rhapsody of Fire. This is the side of Rhapsody from the original split between Look at Ready and Staropoli. Uh, the star body side, the keyboard side, any, everyone that's now in the band, the only original Ralsei member is the keyboard and main songwriter. This is Challenge the Wind, and I listened to it. The reason I, the reason I originally listened to this is because I read someone mentioning that it sounded weird, and they wanted to know if there was something weird with the mix or anything. I, like a production thing? Yeah. I don't think it sounds weird at all. I, I don't know what they were hearing. Everyone gets so in their own heads about this stuff. Like, I think sometimes they are learning and they are not sure what's going on. I understand that. Uh, because if, if you are with people that start mentioning things like, oh, this is too bright, or oh, the high end is too shrilly, or the low end, blah, 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 which is what I do. Um that's how you start paying attention to those things. And it takes a time you from... break your brain if you do this. Like you start <laughs> and you start noticing things and you don't know exactly what they are and you get confused. And that's understandable. That's how you learn. That's how I learned uh, doing like ear training. Uh, but anyways, that was fine. I listened to it. This is a first of the show because when we were setting out to record this uh, episode... I had listened to this album and Kyle hadn't. And that has never happened before. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I since listened to it, but, yeah. when you, but when we were planning the episode originally, yeah, I hadn't listened to it and you had, which, yeah, I, I literally it's was like, it's a win for me. <laughs> this is special. Well, cause, well, cause like I've made a point in my life before this to just be like, oh, this is the like mediocre Rhapsody. I don't need to listen to it. <laughs> yeah. That's, I understand the, I understand that. I, and I, I am somewhat like that as well. Uh, but it's nice to check out music because sometimes they could do something interesting. Have they done yeah, something sure. interesting? I don't think so. I think... It's, um, it's not a bad album. It's not bad. That, that's, that's the problem, right? That's usually our problem and many people's problem with music. It's not bad. It's not great. That means it's meh. It's I think as far as being like a symphonic power metal album, you can put this on and be like, yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. they're doing it. Goes it. On the playlist. Doing the it goes on the playlist, yeah. but it has not, it, it, I, I, I make the joke a lot uh, that everyone's, uh, the, the actual rating scale is, is this the new, uh, the second fur coming of power metal that will revolutionize or change our lives? Is it? absolutely awful or the worst rating possible it's just mid and there the the, three, the on the three point rating scale of good fine and bad 
but it, you know. it, it's not even that. It's great, awful, and mid. <laughs> <laughs> and mid is worse because it doesn't make you feel angry even at it for being bad. <laughs> but you are not like, whoa, it blew my mind. So that's the thing. It's just a, a competent album. None of the songs stuck with me. That's the worst part. Like usually when I listen to one of these albums, I don't listen to full albums a lot, but one or two songs will be cool enough and I will save them and I will actually listen to that over and over again. With this album, none of the songs really caught me. Um, they have a 16 minute long song as the fourth song. Yeah, that, that was a choice. When, when it was like after like four minutes, I'm like, okay, that was an all right song. And then it was another 12 minutes. Yeah. So it's really weird. Like Jesus Christ. Pacing ways, it's really weird. I know by now it's the, it's the meme is that if you're doing a power metal album, you have the intro track, the single with or the power metal song uh, with guitar, then it lowers a bit. Then you have a ballad somewhere. And then the final track is the longest one over nine minutes whatever these yes. guys tried to mess with that and that's commendable uh but the execution Some was not the long song right at the start but it doesn't happen a lot uh and here it didn't work it was just why is this still going uh because there's not there's not enough here to war on this long song and then all, it, overall it was just like oh i'm still listening to this album but i i don't know it doesn't it doesn't work for me. Maybe it works for you. Yeah. We know that this man has uh, fans. Uh, that's perfectly fine. And if you like, love this album, that's awesome. It made something for you. Just not yeah, for as, us. As I was going through it, I, the songs I clicked, the ones that I liked the most were the first track, Challenge the Wind, and then later on, Diamond Claws, I thought was decent. Like When I was writing my like basic notes on this album, the thing that keeps coming back to my mind is that it's missing that special sauce. Yeah, and I think you know that's that's probably the Luca side of all. Of this. I don't know. I don't. Know. I don't know if I want. maybe or maybe it's the collaboration between them. I want to like, say just, they're just older now. I I don't know. I want to say this uh, because I think that's the easy thing to go to when we talk about Rhapsody. Like we all say, oh, we are missing Luca. That's the key ingredient. But I don't know, man. It's how long has it been by now? S like, since they split up. Since they split up. It's been a while. Is, is it been like 20 years? 15 years? It hasn't been, it hasn't been 20. But I don't know, man. Time's just goes through my fingers now. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's been forever. And like Luca doesn't even like playing guitar. <laughs> he, He's doing a piano thing now. Right. So for years, he, the, the moment he split from Rhapsody and started doing the, the, his own Rhapsody things, uh, the Luca Therese Rhapsody, blah, blah, blah. He was already moving it away. He wanted to be a keyboard player. He wanted to do, and then he didn't want to do metal at all for years. And then he was like, man, I need, I need to eat. And he did uh, <laughs> Trilly Leone Rhapsody, which they, which was pretty good. Yeah. But they didn't even want to call it Rhapsody. And it's pretty yeah, out. No, it's pretty cool, too. but it's pretty out there. Uh, while Staropoli is still doing power metal. And I don't know if, Putting Luca there, I don't think it would make it. Whoa! It, it would just be a different band. That's it. Yeah, and I, uh, like it's it, if this band was just another band with Staropoli and some other guys. Nobody would listen called, to it. We, called something else. We it, would not be reviewing. It would it. just be like another symphonic power metal band. You're like, oh yeah, those guys are they're, they're okay sometimes. Yeah, but ha having to deal with the like the baggage. Yeah, I have the of the brand. name. Yeah, that's the problem. And having the brand, the brand name recognition. Like somebody just getting into power metal now would be so fucking confused dealing with Rhapsody as they are, as we We're, see it every time as someone we, you know, make, up, yeah. every time we make the chart. Yeah, you know, it's right there. Yeah, uh, but I think I think the band can do something better because they have a good performer. They have a great vocalist. The material is just lacking that. I don't know that that special thing. Like, yeah, hook me with something. Yeah, like, I, I really saw this version me. of Rhapsody live last year and i thought they were pretty good maybe it's just because like oh i'll enjoy the song emerald sword live <laughs> shocking shocking yeah i know <laughs> but like and when they played songs from the newer stuff that i didn't recognize i'm like oh you know it's all right but you know i'm i'm there for like yeah the you know pre-2012 songs or whatever they don't have and then that, it was all, it also that show was the one with uh windrose yeah and just having 
actual power metal after Windrose was so nice. <laughs> but that's another conversation. That's a different conversation, but also like yeah. it's not that Star Body needs to go and and start doing uh Sabaton and Beast in Black for to make it work. But find some no. hooks there. Try, try to try to change it up a bit. Um a bit more than the last two free albums. That's that would be cool, I I think. I think this album is the very first like full Staropoly of Fire album I've actually gone and listened through. Because I couldn't be showing up on you on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I shouldn't even have mentioned it. I just surprised you. Uh, like... <laughs> yeah, if you had just sprung this on me, I would have been like, what the fuck? You actually listen to this? What is I happening miss, in my life right now? I miss my now? chance. I miss my chance. God, you're, you're really fucked up there. Yeah. Uh, we'll see when it happens again. Hopefully it will be uh, something different, uh, something that I actually like more. Um, but, well, that's it. That was uh, Challenge the Win. Um if you liked it, that's fine. If you liked the previous Rhapsody of Fire album of the Star Poly one, you'll probably enjoy this one. Or maybe find yourself being like, yeah, it's a bit of the same-ish thing. It's not exactly same-ish, the same thing, but, you know, it's in line. I can't compare it to anything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. Um, uh, that's, uh, that's it. That's it for that, for Rhapsody. All right, then last up today, I also want to talk about the new album Manifesto by the band Sunburst. This is a prog metal band who their first album was in like 2016. So it's been a, a fucking while since their last one. This yeah, is just yeah. number two after that one. The thing that I think Sunburst are best known for is their vocalist sounds a hell of a lot like Roycon. Ooh, that's nice. Like a lot. So if you're, if you're into like Roy Khan and like Camelot and Conception and all that, you'd probably dig this band. They're not a power metal band. I think they're very much fall into like that more proggy style. When, when it came to their first album, I saw some people like really into it, but I thought their first album was like a little boring, like on the boring side of prog. So I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll give the second one a shot. Cause I, I you know I've seen people liking this one too. And I, I think I do like manifesto better than the first one. Uh, I think the songs just they lean a, a little more into like the like some cool guitar stuff. They're not just chugging along, and you know the vocalist still sounds a hell of a lot like Roy Khan. Mm -hmm. So hey, you know I, I'm down for that. I know you said you didn't you didn't listen to this one yet. Uh, I think you you would probably think it's all right. This is when I was listening to this album, I was feeling like this is the kind of band that a certain subset of the prog power crowd would fucking love. Mm. Uh, you probably like you know that like prog with a little li just a you know sprinkling of power at times. I like that. Plus, plus there's like some symphonic stuff in there too, just to you know add, add a little extra oomph, you know, here and there. Yeah, I'll... whereas uh, it, it's not just you know chugging along big brain stuff. There, there, there's still some like cool metal in here too. I actually, I actually intended to listen to this album, uh, but it's been hard for me uh, to listen to new music recently. Um, but yeah, I, I love the art when I, when I saw it and it's like, this looks interesting. And then people are like, yeah, this is pro, this is cool, blah, 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 blah. I want to check it. I might be that subset of the pro power crowd that likes this kind of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. so I'm looking forward to it, um, a lot. Yeah. Of all the like, you know, symphonic and power and stuff that we've been talking about <laughs> on the, uh, on this episode, I think this is going to be the most like away from that style mm. for as far as like the songs that i was most into here i like uh the second song hollow lies and the last song nocturne uh the first song the flood is pretty good too and i think as soon as those vocals start you can hear the con <laughs> nice <laughs> nice that, Which, that makes me really interested really, really yeah interested. I, I won't say it's like that high level of quality but for that for that like that flavor of vocalist i think uh you'll probably dig it nice nice um, Alrighty. I'm going to look forward to that. And actually, this made me think something that we didn't prepare at all. What's that? But there's a new Lepros album for the Progheads. Uh, I have not listened. It's I, I only listened to the singles. I need to listen to the full album. Uh, but it's so cool. If you like Lepros 
or if you like prog and really great delicate vocals ah, it's just this is the bonus recommendation go check out leprous <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so yes check out leprous and i had also been planning on talking about a couple more albums on this episode uh that were supposed to release in june uh but it's june 29th as of right now and they have not released so the band Valhalor was supposed to have a new album out, but I think that got pushed because of like label things or something. They're an Aust- I think Australian band that does like uh, like melodic death metal, folky Viking stuff. It's pretty cool, and I was looking forward to that, but uh, that release got pushed. And then there's a new band from Atlanta called Jaeger that. W- was supposed to have a release their first like full release in June that I thought would be pretty cool. Uh, but it's not out. So <laughs> maybe next month. <laughs> maybe next time. Uh, and talking about next time are, and I'm putting you on the spot right now. Are we going to get mm-hmm. another episode before you go to mad with power fest? Yeah. That, that's something I've been thinking about. It's like, are we going to, will we, cause we're doing this right at the end of June. We'll be, do, we'll do an episode in July. We should. Uh, I, we probably should, but it, it's going to depend on if we have things to talk about. We'll, if there are we albums can that have, find things to or, talk about, or or we can find something to talk about. Yeah. Because then, uh, end of July, start of August, um, I'm going to be at Mad with Power. That episode, we're going to the episode after that, we'll do an episode about that festival, and then uh, like exactly a month after that is Prague Power. We'll do an episode about yeah. that. We, we need to keep so the ratio. Like the, like the new, Oh, oh, the new music episodes are gonna may, maybe we'll do one in between. I guess we'll just kind of see what comes up and how we feel. Yeah, we, we need we need to keep the ratio of normal episodes to travel blog. <laughs> that so, we like, promised. <laughs> people apparently like the travel log. Yes, like, I know, but it should. I, I've seen it, people say like, "Oh, I'm living it vicariously through you," and I'm like, "Wow, look at me providing." A service or value to people yeah that's true that's true that's fine that's fine but we, let's do it let's including try you to, uh, <laughs> yeah of course not at these festivals <laughs> i know i know <laughs> let's uh but let's try it i want i want to have another episode before you go there and you start your 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 season of <laughs> of shows and travels hey we we've done so much new music this year compared to other years Oh, we, but we that can even do like a catch up. The past episode doesn't or matter. The past doesn't matter. Yeah. We are in the now. We're doing it. Uh, but that's it for this yeah, episode. Like, uh, I think we don't have anything yes. else right now. It was uh, as short as we could make it. Incredibly, it's like an hour long. <laughs> oh, that's... Even with the Sonic and Eurobeat tangents, which <laughs> you know that's what you're really here for. That's what you're really here for. The good tangents. Uh, but that's it for now. Follow us, subscribe, like if you're on YouTube and if you're listening somewhere else, that's, I don't know how it works, wherever you are. If there's a button to like something or subscribe or put a star or a rating, I, yeah, just find it and, and, and hit it repeatedly. And you can find us on our Instagram as the powerful podcast. I think <laughs> I, I need to memorize all our socials, but we'll post stuff to Instagram very you would think after uh, nearly seven years, you would have the socials memorized. I don't even have, I don't even remember where the thing is written to open it and, and read it uh, because I'm really bad at this, <laughs> but we're, we're making it work. We're making it work. Thanks a lot for listening. And uh, we thank you to the patrons who are, are still on the Patreon. Thank you to our Patreons that are keeping the lights on on the podcast. Uh, there's no actual paywall content that we make. Uh, but you help make the podcast happen because there's actually expenses attached to them. Some of which has some of which have gone up recently, but we're managing it. Um, uh, <laughs> so if you find our Patreon uh, for the powerful the Power Metal podcast and you want to drop it a dollar, uh, that's great. That helps a lot, and you have an our eternal gratitude. And that's it. Let's call it here because we're taking so long. Stay powerful. All right, go back to play some Elden Ring and stay powerful.